Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 39 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about that Australia is the leading country in the world for virtualization and according to Duncan Hewitt, the SVP and GM for VM's business in APAC in Japan, the country's transition to consuming multi-cloud environments is accelerating faster than anywhere else. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips around virtualization and the cloud. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here, and it's great to talk about Australia, another uh, kind of a leap ahead against the rest of the world. I mean, what's going on over there? Yeah, absolutely. We really are. And we talk about this on quite a few shows about Australia, how we embrace and really take action when it comes to implementing. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased we're talking about this. So, look, you know, it, once again, Australia is focusing on being progressive, Dave. And look, in your opinion, how do you see this continuing? I think that ultimately Australia, as we talked about on the show before, is willing to try anything that's uh, going to provide them with, uh, you know, kind of an up, you know, take into their business. And so going forward, this is, uh, you know, something I expect from them. So they're leveraging private cloud, public cloud, they're virtualizing, uh, they're in essence leveraging any weapon that they can, they can put in their arsenal that will kind of take them to the next level. And I think that doing this without hesitation, which is uh, something that I, th I don't see happening in the rest of the world. I was asking about, you know, security is an issue and things like that. I think Australia is kind of willing to push this aside thoughtfully, make sure security is there, but not necessarily hinder them with fear. And so the fear has kind of gone by the wayside because they see this as an opportunity to kind of jump ahead of the market. And I think that's, that's the right thing to do. If you're a small country, um, with a, a lot of efficiency, a lot of very smart people, you know, leverage your innovation, you know, leverage your technology in very innovative ways. And I think that's what Australia is doing. And so should, they should be applauded for it. They should basically be leading the rest of the world in terms of kind of in common patterns that people are using to move into the cloud. Well, yeah, I mean, like, like uh, Duncan said, you know, I think the, the virtualization aspect of cloud has, has become a real big thing, you know, from moving away from maybe a, a, the hybrid model and more to a multi-cloud. So I'm curious to find out your, your opinion, actually. Which country would you compare Australia to for this kind of progression in the virtualization? I think ultimately it would be compared against the United States and, and maybe England in the, in, the, in the second. I mean, if you look at the United States, they're typically innovative when it comes to the smaller businesses. And a lot of the Australian businesses out there, if you look at their GDP and the revenue growth, things like that, basically align with the medium-sized businesses in the United States. The large businesses have a tendency to be a bit of sticks in the mud when it comes to adopting technology. And if you look at the UK, you take out the banks, a lot of the UK companies are in essence kind of moving in the same direction. I'm seeing an aggressiveness and progressiveness you know, from those companies I didn't see 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And I think they kind of see this as the writing on the wall that, you know, the reason they missed some boats back when the web started to arrive and other kind of technological shifts started to arrive is they didn't act fast enough. And Australia is probably one of them. And now they decided, well, guess what? We're going to act fast enough. We're going to basically not only move forward as quickly as we see the rest of the world moving forward, but quicker than the other folks are willing to move. And I think that's the right play to do it. You don't have to spend a lot of money anymore. You don't have to spend a lot of risk in making these things happen. You can just go ahead and, uh, and take things to the next level yourself. Yeah, you're truly right. I mean, Australia, I think, was seen a few years back as being that sort of bit slower off the mark and getting to, to market speed. But now, I mean, it's as, as, Dun as I got re referenced Duncan again, it's changed, isn't it? The goalposts have changed. And I think it's, it's quite, um, refreshing really that embracing of virtualization because for every dollar that's you know spent on virtualization software there's at least a three to five dollar back savings on hardware costs so you know it really makes a smart move to get virtual doesn't it it does and also virtualization on premise is going to be much more efficient with virtualization in the cloud you know we have now vmware instances we can move on aws with the vmware you know uh, services on the cloud or you can basically leverage the native uh, virtual services that exist in the cloud-based systems, AWS, Google, Microsoft. We talked about them on the show before. So it's just kind of getting into the groove, the fact that we're going to run these things on logical devices, not physical devices anymore. And it's not about how much hardware we're going to own or how much data center space we're going to lease. It's about our ability to be efficient with the technology that we have. And I think that's the right way to look at it. I think a lot of companies are still thinking backwards. They're still thinking MIPS. They're still thinking 
servers and cores that they own, things like that. I hear it all the time. You're going to be at the losing end of this if you're doing that. You're going to spend a lot more money. You're going to be a lot more slower, a lot less agile. And your core competitors are able to, in essence, uh, work their way around you, leveraging the cloud. And I think Australian companies kind of get it, so which is a step in the right direction for Australia. I think everyone understands the differences between virtualization and the cloud. We have a tendency to kind of, um, I mean, I just wrote you a blog and I sent you some, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, very um, detailed um, views from the trenches when you move into cloud computing. And a lot of people have a tendency to confuse virtualization with cloud. They're very similar in the fact that we can actually leverage a logical device and it's not necessarily bound to a physical hardware instance. But when you're leveraging in the cloud, you have the notion of multi-tenancy that comes in. When you're leveraging just virtualization, you're dealing with a virtual environment. And so it's a little different in terms of how you leverage the technology. You need to understand the differences before you move forward. Keep an eye on the workload requirements going forward. So if you are you know, have a workload that is going to leverage some sort of virtualized environment, make sure that you are sharing the databases properly, leveraging security properly, you're leveraging context switching properly. It's extremely important as you move forward. Uh, focus on ops. I mean, this is all about operating the systems and being successful and, and ongoing and how these things are going to work and play well in the hands of the users. And so we have to have virtualization around operations. We have to have cloud ops. We have to have DevOps. We have to have all these various kind of ops techniques that are in place. So we understand that the game to be played is after deployment. It's not necessarily leading up to the architecture. It's continually improving systems that are virtualized or not as we, in essence, move forward. Lots of moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. I think we've got a bit of a time delay at the moment on our um, on our video. Are you hearing me okay? Yeah, very fine. Great. Okay, I don't know if the audience can can see there is a, a bit of a time delay audio wise. Well, 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 I'll try and work that out in the in the post editing if I can. But um, but no, they're great top three tips there, Dave. And look, we really appreciate all the blogs you write for us as well. And and if if you're watching this uh, want this video for the first time. Uh, I'll include a link below so you can check out the blogs that David writes for us because they're, they're pretty in-depth and pretty cool blogs. So really appreciate that. David also writes for InfoWorld and Deloitte as well. So we really, really appreciate all the hard work that David puts into the blogs that he does for Nelson Hilliard. And, uh, you know, thanks for being part of the Australia show this week, Dave. Really appreciate that. It's always a pleasure, man. Keep up. <laughs> Fantastic. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching. Um, we hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. There are some graphics on the screen, which are, which are always nice to see. At least you can see what I'm talking about. And also you get you can find David and I on iTunes and Stitcher as a podcast. So you don't have to watch us. You can just listen to us as well. Um, remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and with your colleagues. And if you do subscribe to the channel, which we hope you do, um, remember Remember to click the uh, bell, uh, notification bell on the screen so you get advised of the latest videos coming up. Again, thanks for watching and until next week.